Hi everybody! I'm Hillary and welcome to day four of the Card Day Challenge. Can you believe it? We've already gone through three days of this challenge and we're only left with two more days together. But I hope that your tarot practice will continue far beyond our work together this week. So today's lesson is one of my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite things to teach about the tarot because we start talking about pop culture. Today is a day where you can so totally devolve into Netflix binging whatever your favorite show is. And in fact, I encourage you to do this as part of your card of day challenge homework for today, as well as, of course, pulling your card of the day. But what I, why I want you to indulge in your favorite show is because this is a part of how tarot works. We're going to talk, be talking about uh, archetypes and the power of story in relation to how tarot works. So when I talk about archetypes, um, I'm going to give you a little bit of a definition of the archetype what the word archetype means, um, as per MiriamWebster.com. Um, so the full definition of the word archetype is the original pattern or model of which all things of the same type are representations or copies. Prototype, also a perfect example. Um, the second definition of it is an idea. And the third definition is more of the definition that we're talking about when we're talking about the archetypes of the tarot. So the third definition of archetype is an inherited idea or mode of thought in the psychology of C.G. Young that is derived from the experience of the race and is present in the in unconscious of the individual. Now what the heck does that mean? <laughs> So the Empress card can be seen as the representation of the mother archetype. So we can think of our own mothers, or mother figures, or grandmothers, and that is applying the mother archetype. We know what the concept of the mother archetype is based on our own knowledge of our personal experiences with our mothers. And that experience, that personal experience, then filters into how we would interpret and how we would interact with the mother archetype. Um, so the Empress card can be seen as the mother archetype in the tarot. Um, the Emperor would be the father archetype. Now, what this has to do with tarot and with binge-watching your favorite show is, for example, we see archetypes in any good... Okay, my best example is I love Game of Thrones. I, I mean, I, I know everybody Everybody talks about it, everyone's fanatical about it, but yeah, I love Game of Thrones. Seen all of the TV series, read all of the books thus far, I am obsessed. But why are we talking about Game of Thrones? Well, when you look at Game of Thrones, if you're familiar with Game of Thrones, we have um, the representation of the seven gods or the light of the seven, um, which would be the father, father, mother, smith, warrior, maiden, crone, stranger. So some of these archetypes are fairly clear. Full card. The full card is numbered zero, and it's the first card in a tarot deck. And it can represent any person new to a situation. Um, any sitcom can start out with a full character because that's usually the protagonist of the series is the full character going through the journey and meeting different characters or archetypes along the way. So now that we've talked about archetypes and their roles in different sweeping sagas, such as Game of Thrones, such as Outlander, um, such as Real Housewives, or any other drama that you're obsessed with, Empire, Grey's Anatomy, you, you'll start to be able to pick out, oh, that I, I see the Empress in her, I see the Fool in her, I see uh, the Lover's Card manifesting in that situation. Um, 
you'll be able to start to pick up on that energy. Now, we want to talk about story as well and the power of story in not only um, in our own lives, but also in learning the tarot itself and the structure of the tarot. The reason why I recommend starting out with a Rider Waite Smith based deck is so that you can see the pictures and the stories going on in each card, not just in the major arcana, but in the minor arcana, because there are some tarot decks where the seven of wands is just seven wands or seven batons on a card, and that's it. There's no other story going along with it. It is just seven batons or seven wands or seven coins or five coins or three cups, and you really can't get a lot from the pip cards or the minor arcana cards with no story going on in the cards. So that's the reason why I say to pick a Rider Waite Smith clone deck or just go with the Rider Waite Smith because you actually have a story in the card that you can tell. You can just look at the card and talk about what story may be going on in the card. A good tarot reading is like the best story come to life in the pictures on the cards. Because that's all that tarot really is in a nutshell, is pictures on a card. That's all that tarot is. Yes, it has a structure. Yes, it has specific meanings for each card. Yes, they do work together. But when you really boil it down, tarot is just pictures on a card, and you're telling the story based on the pictures that you're seeing. So you tell the story in those pictures, you relate it to your life or the life of a client if you're reading for a client, and you have a tarot reading. That's what tarot reading really is. For example, so here's another example of why I recommend the Rider Waite Smith deck for a beginner instead of another deck that might have only seven wands or eight swords just on the background, and that's it. Just eight swords. So here is the eight of swords from the Radiant Rider, Rider Waite Smith deck. So as you can see, that is not just eight swords on a background. This picture, as they say, is worth a thousand words. It's telling a story just by existing there. So eight swords on a background, and that's it. That doesn't really tell us anything unless you know and remember the picture that is right here. When you remember the picture associated with the Eight of Swords, you then remember the story that goes along with it, and then you can read the Eight of Swords, even if it's Eight Swords on a background. But when you're just starting out, you need this. This is a better visual representation when you're just starting rather than Eight Swords. What are you going to get from eight swords? Nothing. <laughs> this tells you a lot just by existing in this depiction. So with the eight of swords, you can simply, if you're stuck with the meaning, you're not sure what that means, just read what's on the card. Describe what's on the card. So I see a woman. She's bound. She's blindfolded. There's eight swords around her. There is land and a river, and it looks like she's standing on both the land and the river. There is a castle or a bunch of houses on a mountainside in the background on a cliff. So that's describing the card itself. And if you get meanings from that, then you can stop right there. But if you want to go on, if you're still not sure what it means, especially as applicable to your situation or the situation of a client or friend that you're reading for, you continue to describe the card by asking questions of it, asking questions of yourself. Well, how did she get in this position? What situation might have led to her being in this position? Was she kidnapped? Um, who did she fall in with? Did, you fall, did she fall in with the wrong crowd? 
was this anything to do with the decisions that she made previously? Is it just happenstance that she wound up there? And then how is she going to get out of it? These are all valid questions to be asking the card itself as, and asking yourself as you're reading it. Because then you can gather more information out of it. So there's storytelling with regard to the tarot. Finally, we cannot discuss archetypes and power of story without talking about Joseph Campbell and his work with mythology and looking over the mythos of many different cultures in the world and integrating them into an overarching story that he called the hero's journey. And we call it in the tarot the fool's, the fool's journey because when you look at the hero's journey and how Joseph Campbell describes the hero's journey, you are going to see that same arc in the fool's journey throughout the major arcana of the tarot. So I cannot not talk about Joseph Campbell in this video because he is the reason why knowing that story and mythos is so powerful. It's because of his work that I know it. So I would definitely urge you to check out his book. I believe it's called The, the Hero with a Thousand Faces. Um, and I'm going to include some links underneath this video so that you can um, go ahead and check those links out at your leisure. But one of the links I'm definitely going to include is the first part of my Major Arcana In-Depth series on The Fool, which also has a reference to Joseph Campbell and his work, um, and especially as it relates to the Major Arcana and how it relates to what's called the monomyth or the hero's journey, which you see play out in much of pop culture and stories and TV shows and movies that we love. Um, and the link that I'm going to provide for you also has a video about the hero's journey and monomyth and how writers of TV and of movies have taken Joseph Campbell's work and integrated it into that format so that you see it repeated again and again with The Matrix, with Harry Potter, with Star Wars and Luke Skywalker. So this is the kind of stuff that I get jazzed about, and this is the reason why I love to teach this portion of the tarot, because you really do get a big, aha, oh, I see these characters in my life. I see these characters in the shows that I love, and this is the reason why I loved the shows that I love, because of this overarching structure that is the hero's journey. So, so today's challenge, or your homework, should you choose to accept it, is not just pulling a card of the day, but also choosing one of your favorite TV shows, an episode out of your favorite TV show or even a movie that you love that you watch again and again. And I challenge you to take a look at the structure of the tarot and take a look at the structure or the characters within the movie or TV show that you're watching. And I want you to start to make some correlations between the tarot deck and whatever it is that you choose to watch for today. So if you love Grey's Anatomy, who's Meredith? Who is Christine? Those are a few different examples. You can use Grey's Anatomy. You can use Outlander. You can use Game of Thrones. You can use Star Wars. Um, Star Wars is actually a really interesting one and one that I've uh, been looking into because I would love to have someone make or make myself an official Star Wars tarot deck because there is no officially licensed Star Wars tarot, tarot deck. So I'm looking into that and I have discussed that with a few Star Wars nerds about who the fool would be in a, in a Star Wars tarot deck. Um, who the high priestess would be in a Star Wars tarot deck. Um, and it really does get into 
different perspectives as well, because if you look at the original trilogy, you would say that the fool was Luke Skywalker. But if you look at the overall, when you count in the prequels, would then Anakin Skywalker become the fool in that deck? Questions to ponder if you happen to choose Star Wars for your challenge of the day. So go ahead, pull your, your tarot card for the day, post it in the Facebook group. I will see you later on this evening to see how it's going and to help with any questions you may have or any insights you may have. But then also feel free to binge watch whatever your hearts desire and apply tarot to it. I want to see that kind of work also in the Facebook group. Have a great day, and I will see you tomorrow for the final day of the challenge. Take care.